Javante Tank Davis and Frank Martin card is finalized. Let's talk about it in this video. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, share the video, turn on your notifications. Catch me live Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm also live every Sunday morning with the Sang and OG KQKC Boxing Network. Uh, Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. I ask that you join the channel as a member. Drop super chats and super thanks when you come by the live streams and the videos that we do. And hit me up if you want to debate. Knockoutboxing86 at yahoo.com is the email address. Um, or you can just come by the channel while I'm live and we can debate right then and there on the spot. But let's get it cracking, bro. So, the Javante Tank Davis Frank Martin card is a month away, give or take a, 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 a few weeks. I think about four weeks away. And as we get closer to the card, obviously news continues to come out. And now we got the card finalized. It'll be four fights on this card for pay-per-view and an additional two fights that'll be on the preliminary card that they aired before the fight on, um, on, on regular Prime Video and on Premier Boxing Champions YouTube channel. I don't know what those two fights are just yet. I should have the information in a little bit. I'll reach out to the homie L-Dub to see what those prelim fights are. But the main card, the pay-per-view card, I gotta say, I give it a B minus. A B minus for the card. I don't think this card is 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 just a great card. Like, for instance, the Crawford Madrimov card or the card coming up June first with uh the the the, the match room versus um Queensberry card with Ray Ford, Nick Ball, and and and, and the Dubois and, and Hergovich fight. Like that card is is phenomenal. This card though is a very good card and. What I like about the card is every fight is guaranteed to be an entertaining fight when you look at the parties involved in the card. Um, obviously, starting off the night, you'll have, um, I don't know the order, so if I, I know the co-main event, the main event, obviously, but the first two fights, let's talk about them. So one fight is going to be Gary Antoine Russell versus Albert, Alberto Pueyo, the former WBA 140-pound champion who lost his belt because he's a, he was a, he tested dirty for performance enhancing drugs. Um, and so he's trying to work his way back up. His first fight back will be against Gary Antoine Russell, which is a tall task for him. I honestly believe that um, this fight is very upsetting as a diehard fight fan and quite frankly, as a Gary Antoine Russell fan. fan. Man, my brother Batman, um, rest in peace. Those of y'all that have been following the channel or been part of the YouTube boxing community for a long time, you know um, who Batman is. And Batman, um, you know, is one of the reasons that I, I, I'm a huge um, Russell fan. And what's upsetting about this fight is that this is a fight that could have took place a year and a half ago when, when Pueyo was the champion. And Gary Antoine Russell turned down a title shot. Now to only come full circle to watch these two fighters fighting for a secondary WBC interim belt, it just it just rubs me all kind of wrong. But nonetheless, very good fight. I believe it's opening the night. Um, it's a, but it's a very good fight um, for both fighters and for Gary Antoine Russell. He'll have his first opportunity to become somebody's mandatory. This is for the WBC interim 140 pound title. So he'll be next up in the mandatory line for Devin Haney, assuming that like Devin Haney and Sandor Martin can't get a deal done. Um, then the next up would be, you know, Devin Haney versus Gary Antoine Russell. If it's, if Sandor Martin is the reason the deal don't get done or, you know, Sandor Martin versus Gary Antoine Russell, if Devin Haney is forced to vacate, you know, or no telling how long, um, Devin Haney will be the WBC champion. So if he if he fights Sandor Martin and beats Sandor Martin and continues to campaign at 140, eventually that Gary Antoine Russell mandatory is going to be called, assuming that Devin Haney doesn't unify or anything like that. If he has a voluntary defense, then he'll probably end up having to fight Gary Antoine Russell after that. So puts Gary Antoine Russell a step closer to having his first shot at a world title. Um, but it is upsetting because Gary Antoine Russell should have already had an opportunity um, to be a world champion if he would have took the fight with Alberto Pueyo and his reasons for not taking the fight. Some of the dumbest things I've heard a fighter say, he says you don't look behind you when you got bigger and better things in front of you. And the bigger and better thing that he had um, instead of fighting Alberto Pueyo was to be on his goddamn undercard. He was on the Pueyo and Akhmadav undercard, bro. 
Oh no, I'm sorry. He was he was on the Pueyo and Roly undercard. Um but Pueyo got pulled from the fight. He would have been fighting Pueyo instead of Roly. Roly got that fight because Gary Antoine didn't want to fight. Just whatever, bro. So anyway, that's a good fight. The next fight, um, Carlos Adamas versus Terrell Goucher. Another fight that's guaranteed to be entertaining because of how Carlos Adamas fights. Um, Terrell Goucher, a veteran in the game. He's gonna put up a good fight. He's gonna um he's coming up from 154. Um, skilled fighter. So a good fight for Carlos Adamas, who'll be defending his newly uh he's the newly crowned WBC middleweight champion of the world since Jamal Charlo was stripped of his title. Um so he'll be making his first title defense on the card. And Carlos Adamas, all action fighter, very, very entertaining, never in a boring fight. Going against Terrell Goucher, who's gonna be forced to sit there and fight with him and box with him and power box and he because he's not a, a big mover and he's not he's not as young as he used to be. So that's a really good fight. That's a really, really good fight. You know what I mean? Um then we get to the fights that are carrying the card, obviously. You have the David Benavidez versus Vizdick fight where David Benavidez we know is one of the most entertaining fighters in boxing. Um and he's he's just can't miss TV. If you if you're a fan of boxing, you tuning in to a David Benavidez fight. Whether you buying the fight if he's on pay per view, or you you fire sticking it because you cheap and you and you and you are cancer to the sport. <laughs> just my thoughts, bro. If you're not gonna support the sport and you stealing from the sport, what's the point of the sport giving us the matchups we want? But that's a don't let me go off on that tangent because I can go off on that for a long time. But. David Benavidez is must-see TV for a fight fan. You know what I mean? You know for a fact that him and Vazdik, um, with Vazdik's age, Vazdik's style of, of boxing, but he ain't moving a whole lot. He looking to land his counter shots, step back, counter your ass, and Vazdik got some power. Just ask Arthur Paterbia, but Vazdik a dog. He gonna fight. He gonna fight two for nail with you and putting him in there with somebody like David Benavidez for Benavidez's debut at 175. Gotta love that fight. And then, you know, Will Benavidez have an even better gas tank? Will he be even a stronger version of himself because he has seven less pounds to cut because he's only cutting the 175 instead of cutting the 168? Very interesting to see um, how David Benavidez looks at, um, at light heavyweight. So that's a great fight. And then obviously, last but certainly not least, um, with the Javante Tank Davis card, we got Tank and Frank, bro. Tank versus Frank. You know, for all of the fights that have gone on in the lightweight division this year, the high-profile fights, obviously we had Parinchek and uh, Navarrete last week. The week before that, we had um, Lomachenko versus Cambosos. July 6th, we got Shakur Stevenson versus Artem. I mean, listen to those names. Y'all all know what's the most exciting fight. You all know what's the most exciting fight this first part of um of, of 2024 for the lightweight division. Cambosos Loma for the vacant IBF. You got Shakur defending his title against um, Artem. You got Navarrete Berenchik for the vacant WBO, and you got Tank defending his title against Frank Martin. Come on, bro. Like, it's not even close. This is the most exciting fight, the most highly anticipated fight, the biggest and best fight at 135 pounds so far this year. Now, and if this is any indication what 135 is gonna have cracking this year, I can't wait to see the second half of the year. A lot of people got a lot of things to stand on. A lot of people have a lot of things to stand on. Shakur Stevenson, free agent. That's what he's saying, he's a free agent. Tank Davis is saying he wants Shakur and Loma. Bob Aaron is saying that Lomachenko wants the most lucrative fights. So it looked like Tank should be able to make one of them fights with Shakur supposedly being free. Bob Aaron and, and Lomachenko wanted a big time lucrative fight for him that he wants the most lucrative fight. We know the most lucrative fight is Tank Davis for Lomachenko. And we know if Shakur Stevenson is a free agent, that makes the Tank Davis, Shakur Stevenson fight extremely easy to make. So we can only go up from 135 pounds. We can only go up for 135 pounds. So I'm extremely excited for this card. I'm extremely excited for boxing. And whether you love Tank Davis or you hate Tank Davis or you are indifferent about it, you have to admit that boxing is better when he's in it. He's been out of the ring for over a year. 
had some some issues with jail and, and and getting his life together and stuff but him being back in the fold only makes boxing better so we'll see if frank martin can spring the upset we'll see if frank martin has the ability to to um to upset the apple cart so to speak but my goodness this card is very good at the top of the card that's what's giving it a b minus because carlos adamas and, and terrell boucher you know not a not not a barn burner but by any means um but definitely you know where's danny garcia he said he was moving up to 160. where's um Evers landy Lara at for a unification of the wba and the wbc between carlos adamas and Evers landy Lara? because in Lara's last fight that shit was like a round round two he didn't do shit like why we couldn't get him versus Carlos Adonis. Then you got um then you got Gary Antoine Russell. Shit, why, why Gary Antoine Russell, why is, is um Pitbull fighting Ryo instead of Gary Antoine Russell versus Pitbull? So definitely some better fights out there that could have made this card a A plus card, but um Tank Davis is worth the price of admission, and so is David Benavidez. So when you get those two on the card together, you can't really complain too much. But the other two fights, while wow, good fights, entertaining fights, action-packed fights, um, not the top of the top of the food chain. I would say there's a very good chance, though, that every fight that's on this card could possibly end in a knockout. The one I have the question about the most, though, is the Carlos Adamas um, versus Terrell Goucher fight. I think every other fight, though, the odds are probably gonna end before the 12 rounds is up that's just my thoughts but y'all let me know what y'all think comment below smash the like sub to the channel we'll see y'all soon peace out